Hello, my name is Brandon Ivey, and today's training, we're going to talk about the psychology of recruiting. Now, it's important that you understand that recruiting is the most important thing that you must learn to do if you're going to become successful at anything that you do. Now, I know for some people that recruiting, even that word to recruit, is a taboo because people don't like to do that. People don't like to uh, ask people for something. People don't like to, especially if you're in a home-based business, ask somebody if they're open to an opportunity or if they would like to try your product. But here's something that if you want to be successful in life, you have to get over. If you don't get over this one step, nothing else that you learn Nothing else, uh, whatever training that you go through in your company is going to make any difference because you will not be able to take action. The act of recruiting is taking action upon what it is that you desire. It's the first step. And one thing you must also understand is that it's not just in a home-based business where recruiting takes place. Recruiting takes place in every field in every single industry that you can think of. From childbirth, we recruit. If you are looking for a relationship, guess what you're doing? You're recruiting. If you're looking after you graduate from high school for a college, you're recruiting. You're recruiting the best college. Or colleges are recruiting the best students. Once you graduate from college, if you graduate from college, you're going to need a job, which means you have to go on interviews, which means you're being recruited. So the act of recruiting is taking place in our lives every single day. But the first thing before you even begin to recruit is to decide what it is that you want. What it is that you're looking for. And you must have this written down. What you desire. Written down. Because when you have that focus on what you desire and you put it out there in the universe, you will start to attract those things to you. If you're in a home-based business and you must recruit to become successful, if you don't have written down the type of person you want to recruit, you may either do two things. Recruit the type of people that is not going to help you succeed or not recruit anybody at all. When the desired result is to recruit somebody who is going to help you build the business and take it to the next level. Now, this is another important step, and I'm going to tell you a secret on how to do this because a lot of people think, oh, this is easy. I know exactly what I want. I know exactly what I'm looking for, and I say, really? What do you want? And this is what they tell me. Well, I don't want somebody who's going to quit. I don't want somebody who's going to make excuses. I don't want somebody who I'm going to have to hold their hand. I don't want somebody who's going to cry and complain over the slightest problem. The owner didn't return my email. Or my upline didn't return my phone call, therefore I'm going to quit. I don't want anybody like that. I don't want losers. Now on face value, that sounds logical, correct? I'm going to give you another example here outside of the home-based business arena. And let's take a look at a, at a woman who has always been in a bad relationship. And she's always been in a bad relationship from boyfriend to boyfriend, from husband to husband. And if you sat her down on a psychologist's couch and you, you wanted to get to the bottom of why this woman keeps attracting the same type of man. And it must be her. But what is it about her that is attracting these men? So you ask her, first of all, what is it that you want out of a man? 
And her answer is, I want a man who doesn't drink. I want a man who doesn't smoke. I want a man who doesn't stay out late at night. I want a man who doesn't hurt me, abuse me, or beat me. I want a man who doesn't disrespect me in front of my children. Now, again, just like if you're recruiting for a business when you're looking for the type of person you want, that sounds logical. But the universe doesn't work that way. The universe does not understand negatives. All she is thinking about is a man that drinks, smokes, treats her bad, disrespects her, is physically abusive, stays out late at night, cheats on her, disrespects her in front of her children. That is what she is thinking about, even though it's in a negative. And what you think about most of the time is what you get. So even when she leaves one relationship, she knows what she doesn't want. She keeps attracting that type of person to her. However, if she changed her thinking, just tweaked it just a little bit, and instead of saying what she doesn't want, if she focused on what she actually wants, like this for example, she should say, I want a man who treats me good. I want a man who makes me feel great about myself. I want a man who respects me. I want a man who treats me like a queen or a princess in front of my children. I want a man who comes home and loves to spend all his time with me. I want a man that will cherish, love, and adore me. If that is what she decided to focus on, that is the type of man she would get. Now let's go back to your business. You talked about what you don't want when you're recruiting somebody. Why not try to focus on what you want and what you're looking for? Like this. I want a leader. I want someone who is independent of me. I want someone who will show up no matter what I do. I want someone who is motivated. I want someone who is willing to make a commitment to get this done no matter what by any means necessary you're you're now putting out in the universe positives of what you want and that's what you're focusing on not the negative what you don't want you're focusing on what you want and that is the type of person that you'll start attracting to you but it's like a magnet it's a two-way street and here's another step that most people fail at. They want to recruit the best person in the world, the number one leader, the person who's going to make the difference. And I'm afraid to tell you, again, it doesn't work that way. Your business will never be dependent on one individual. One individual is not going to make or break your business. So the most important person that you can ever recruit, first of all, is going to be you if you're not willing to recruit yourself there is no way in the world you're gonna recruit somebody else Brandon what do you mean by that I'm in the business I'm recruited oh, are you really see here's what you do birds of a feather flock together if you want that leader you want that superstar you have to become that leader you have to become that superstar. If it's your first day in the business, you find out what's the top position in the company and you start to act like you're already in that position. That is the only way you're going to get there. And when you start to act like you're in that position, you start to recruit people towards you because people love to follow a leader. People love to be around someone who is headed in the right direction. If you act as if you're just a brand new recruit, you're going to recruit people who act the same way. So you need to look into the mirror first before you move any further and ask yourself, in that mirror, are you the type of person I would sign up with to be in business with? Are you the type of person I would follow? Are you the type of person I would trust 
that can show me how to build my business and take it to the next level? And if the answer is no, you will never recruit anybody better than you. You will always recruit at your level. Superstars do not sign up with losers. <laughs> I'm sad to say that. Losers sign up with superstars, but superstars do not sign up with losers. So if your goal is you want to have the best type of people on your team possible, you have to become the best type of person possible, which means you must delve into personal development. But that's not what this training is about. I've done plenty of those. I want to stick with the topic of recruiting. But I want you to understand the basics. Because nothing I say after this is going to mean anything. Unless you understand the basics. You must become the type of person you want to recruit into your business. A seven figure earner is not going to have a conversation with a person only making three figures. It's not going to happen. But if you act and believe as if you are a seven figure earner, regardless of if the bank account shows it, that's what matters the most. And you start attracting those people to you. All right, but let's talk about recruiting. Do you know why most people fail in a home based business? Most people fail because they quit, not because the company is bad. Not because the products are bad, not because the company is good, and not because the company products are good. They fail because they quit. Now, there's a number of many reasons why a person would quit, especially after the first three months. The number one reason why they quit is because they're spending more money on a monthly basis than they're actually making. But why are they spending more money? It means because their business is not growing, which means they're not recruiting. In most companies, just getting yourself a couple of customers will cover your monthly cost, even if you didn't recruit anybody into the business. But most people aren't even able to do that. And why is that? Now, I had a, a leadership training with, with our team just last week, and, and I touched on this just briefly. But here's something that's very, very important to understand. <laughs> and, and like I said, I touched on it just briefly. But most people, when they're out there recruiting in this business, do you realize it actually takes effort for you not to recruit? It takes more effort for you not to recruit than to recruit. I hear people tell me all the time, well, Brandon, I don't know anybody. I don't have any a warm market. I need to pay money to buy leads and purchase leads. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't have access to anybody who's open for an opportunity. That's a bunch of BS. Number one, we are living in the worst economy in the nation's history since the Great Depression. More people are out of work than at any time in known history. The people that are actually working are not making the type of money that they desire. As a matter of fact, their, their, uh, their, their, their lifestyle is diminished. It is not what it used to be 10 years ago. The next generation is not living up to the same standards of their, of their parents. You have Occupy Wall Street going out there, and none of those people even understand why they're out there. All they know is that things are bad, and it's not the way it used to be. Your upward mobility is stagnant. People that did have an upward mobility are so far in debt that they're about to backtrack and lose their homes. So whether you want to admit it or not, you are in need. Every single person out there, no matter what their current economic status is, needs an opportunity. And for you to say, I don't know anybody, is a bunch of BS. You're not willing to open your mouth to ask anybody or talk to anybody. I'm not going to go over the feel, felt, found method. That's a whole other training we already did on how to relate to a person that you don't know and starting a conversation. If you're in a company that offers products and services that everybody wants, 
they need, they can afford, and they're already spending money on, and you can help them and save them money, you have an endless stream of customers that you can approach. The problem is you're not approaching them. Brandon, what do you mean by that? Here's what I mean. Ignorance is bliss. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> and, th and that's fine. But when you get in a home-based business, you're now consciously aware that there's another alternative out there. You're aware of it. So what happens when you're talking to people in casual conversation and they're telling you all their problems and struggles, in the back of your mind, subconsciously, you already know that there's a better way and your conscious mind also knows that there's a better way, but your conscious mind fights your subconscious from speaking out because you're afraid of what the response may be. Let me slow down a bit if that went over some people's heads. What I mean is this. If you're not in a home-based business and you're talking to a friend and the friend is telling you about how how bad their job is, how how sorry their life is, how they wish they can be in a different situation, how they wish they can win the lottery, maybe taking a trip to Vegas to strike it rich. You go along with the conversation without a second thought. Yeah, you're right. But if you're in a business where you know if they got in the business and they worked it, they could change their lifestyle, and that person comes up to you talking about the problems that they have, and you do not tell them about your opportunity, you are consciously holding back your subconscious from, from speaking out. You still don't get what I mean? Let me, let me simplify it even further. Have you ever seen a great movie? Of course you have. The answer is yes. Do you go out there and tell other people, people that you care about, about that great movie that they should also go see it? Yes, you do. Why? You're consciously aware that this might be an experience that they are going to enjoy, so you share the good news. There's no filter holding you back from talking about going to see a good movie. The same goes if you went to a good restaurant or if you uh, went to a good auto dealership. You know, you had to get your car done and you had a good experience. So you tell other people so that they can have a good experience as well. Human nature forces us. We can't help ourselves. We have to share the good news. Whether we want to or not, we can't help it. We subconsciously do it without realizing that we're doing it. Are we getting paid for that? Is the movie theater paying us to share the good news? Is the shoe company paying us to share the good news? Is the uh, mechanic paying you to share the good news? No, but we do it anyway out of force of habit. So this is a common human nature act that we do automatically but what happens when you're in a home-based business and this is good news your subconscious wants you to tell it it wants you to share the good news but you don't that means you are consciously stopping your own subconscious from sharing the good news so the real question is why why are you not sharing the good news if you're in a company that is doing telecommunications and you know most people are on a contract and they're paying $200 a month on their cell phone, 100% of the people has a cell phone and you know that if they signed up with you, they can get their cell phone for 50 bucks a month and you save them over $100 a month. Why don't you say anything? If you know somebody, for example, that may drink coffee they go down to Starbucks every morning or maybe for lunch, two or three cups a day, and that coffee costs three, anywhere between 3 to $5 per cup. But you've got Ganoderma coffee. And you turn around and say, I can give you a box of 20, 20 servings for nine ninety-five. Why don't you do that? If you know a person that's about to get laid off, or their car is about to be repossessed, or they're about to lose their home, they need to come up with an extra couple thousand dollars. And you know your, uh, your compensation plan can provide that for them, but you say nothing. Or you're on Facebook 
where you have access to millions and millions of people, yet your friends list is only 30 friends. Why? Why aren't you adding more friends? Why aren't you sharing the good news? What's holding you back? Unfortunately for you, this is not an answer I can give you. This is an answer that you have to discover through your own journey through personal development. And once you break that barrier down, that filter that is preventing you from opening your mouth and sharing the good news, you will never have success in anything that you do. See, an excuse is people say, I don't like to recruit. <laughs> That's the excuse. Instead of actually delving into why. Fear of rejection? Is that it? Your fear of getting rejected. If you don't overcome that fear, you will always be broke. You will never get a date. You will never get married. You will never go to the best colleges. I know people who, when I was back in high school, they were afraid to apply to certain schools because they were afraid of getting a rejection letter. They never had the school in the first place, so they're not going to lose anything, but they would rather not apply and not go than risk sending out a, a, a uh, application and getting a rejection letter. I know people who write a whole bunch of names down on their list, but they're afraid to call that person because they're afraid the person may say no, or even worse, try to convince them not to do it as well. <laughs> I hope I'm making sense here, because I really can't break it down any more than that. But I can tell you this, after listening to this recording, you are now consciously aware that your brain is playing this game, this trick on you, which means you have the power to reverse it. Most people out there have no idea that this is what's even going on in their head. They have no idea. They're not even aware of it. You actually are aware of it, which means you now can do something about it. You now can overcome it. You know what the enemy is, and the enemy is yourself. I say all the time, the number one recruit and the number one and most important hand is the one at the end of my own wrist. The only superstar on my team is me. The only superstar on your team is you. Because you're the only one you can trust the most. You think you signed up a superstar? You think you got somebody on your team and you're all excited because they brought in 20,000 people in another company. Now they signed up in your downline. You think you're done. You think you're ready to retire. And two months later, another company offers that person half a million dollars to jump ship and they leave and take their entire downline with them. Overnight, you just lost your income. <laughs> what now? You will lose people. You will have people say no. In fact, the most people you talk to will say no. So are you going to quit? Are you going to throw your hands up and say this is too hard? I better go back to the rat race where things are a little bit easier. Where people recruit me. You know who makes the most money? Recruiters. You know who makes the least amount of money? People that get recruited. <laughs> I'm unrecruitable. That's, that's how I am. Nobody recruits. I recruit people. I recruit my upline. They don't recruit me. I pick and choose whose downline I'm going to be a part of. It's a whole different mindset. So after saying all that and you're still confused... Let me go back to the very beginning. The first thing that you need to do is put down on paper what it is that you want. Why do you want it? 
How soon do you want to have it? And what do you need to do to achieve it? How many people would you need on your team? How fast? What's the month-to-month -month progression? Put all of that down first. So now you know where you're going. A rudderless ship goes nowhere. You ever heard of the uh, uh, cruise to nowhere? Where people hop on a boat for three days, the boat goes out to the ocean and sails in a circle for three days and then comes right back to port. You didn't go anywhere. That's how pe most people live their lives. They have no idea what their destination is and they're just out there just cruising. You must have a target. You must understand why. And then you delve into personal development to break down that barrier that is preventing you from talking to people. In this day and age, maybe 40 years ago someone might get away from saying that they live on a farm somewhere and their next neighbor is two miles away. That they have access to nobody. But in today's age, nobody has an excuse to say they don't have access to meet new people. Without having to leave your living room or for some of you that have a laptop that you never take off your bed while you're watching TV late at night. A few couple of button clicks and you've met somebody new. Practice doing that. And I promise you, you're on your first step to understanding the psychology of recruiting. Take care. God bless. My name is Brandon Ivey. Bye-bye.